can you imagine what it would feel like to see hundreds, if not thousands of boxes with your business name on them being sent off to homes all across the country and beyond? Boxes filled with products that you have personally hand-selected for your amazing customers who are eagerly waiting for their next box. Sounds pretty incredible, doesn't it? But if that daydream is quickly interrupted with feelings of overwhelm and fears around finding and sourcing products for a year's worth of boxes and beyond, then you're going to love this video. I'm gonna teach you a super simple and effective way to plan out 12 months of your subscription boxes in one session. I hear a lot of aspiring subscription box owners say, I just don't know if I can keep coming up with new ideas for the boxes each month, or how do I stay creative all year long? What I'm about to show you is exactly how you do that. You're going to follow the trim method. The trim method helps you create an outline for 12 months worth of boxes so that you know exactly the types of products you'll need and when you'll need them. If you're looking to start a subscription box or if you already have one and want to grow it, subscribe to my channel for tips, training, and all things subscription box business. T stands for themes. To start, I want you to take a sheet of paper and make a list of each month of the year across the top of your page. With each month, think about any themes that jump out at you based on the holidays, seasons, events during that month, or any special dates that fall within that particular month. It may be helpful to print a list of novelty or weird holidays for the year to have on hand for inspiration as well. For example, February is Valentine's Day. Maybe you want to curate your box around that holiday for that particular month. March is generally the first day of spring, so maybe your March box becomes your Hello Spring box. Maybe there's a novelty holiday that fits your niche perfectly that you could curate products around, such as National Cuddle Up Day, and you create a box filled with cozy, cuddly, textured products. Just start brainstorming the themes that you could create around each month. It doesn't always have to be around a holiday or a date. If there's a specific theme you want to include, this is where you would plug in all your themes. For example, maybe you want to curate themes around a color scheme or a specific product like flowers or fruit or a flavor. Whatever it is, take a few minutes to list out the themes for each of your boxes. When you're brand new, it will be up to you to come up with your initial themes, but as you continue to grow, you can engage your subscribers for feedback and ideas for future themes. The theory here is that you're reducing stress on your brain by coming up with all of your themes in one batch instead of having to continuously switch gears and come up with new themes at random. Sometimes if I think of a theme idea when I'm not actively planning boxes, I'll just jot it down and add it to my theme list for future planning. When you're focused on the task of coming up with themes, it's so much easier to come up with 12 at once instead of having to come up with two or three every few months, I promise. The R in trim stands for rotate product categories. Many boxes have rotating product categories that they include on a consistent basis. An example of this in my business is body scrub. I like to include a different type of body scrub at least once a quarter. Another example in my business is shea butter. We include a jar of shea butter in every bundle, but what we're curating is the scent. So that's a product category that we plan around. Think about your box and the static product categories that you'll be planning around. By planning out your boxes this way, you can get a sense of how you wanna space those placements out as you're planning for the year. For example, if one of your static product categories is drinkware and you wanna include drinkware four times a year, you can visually see where you can plug in a variety of drinkware items so that your customers aren't getting a drinkware item back to back. In this example, you could place a ceramic mug in the first quarter, a travel tumbler in the second quarter, a wine glass in the third quarter, and maybe a Moscow meal copper mug in the last quarter. That way, they aren't getting the same exact type of item each time, but it all falls under one static category. Another example of this is with a beauty box. One of the product categories could be a lip product. If we place that static category in four times a year, then when we're planning the specific type of product, we could have a lip balm, a lip gloss, a lip stain, and a lip liner. In this way, you systematize those static product categories that you'll rotate through and visually see where you can plug them in so that they're spaced out nicely for your customer. The I in trim stands for insert products. Once you have your themes determined and you've added placeholders for your rotating static product categories, it's time to fill in the rest of your products. Think about the items that you'd like to include in the box that would support each theme. For example, if your box is a bath and body box for women and you're working on the February Valentine's Day box, 
Maybe you'll include heart-shaped bath bombs, chocolate-scented body butter, and makeup remover towels that say love on them. These are just random ideas, of course, but what I'm trying to illustrate is that the theme should help inform what types of products you could include for that month. If you're still stuck on ideas, try using your theme as a search term on Pinterest or on wholesale sites such as Fair or Tundra to spark some ideas. You don't have to have the exact brand of each product listed yet. This is more an outline of the types of products you'd like to include to support your theme. Finally, M is for master plan. Once you have all your product ideas brainstormed under the month and the theme, you've essentially planned out your box lineup for the whole year. You can then create your master plan. Transfer your outline into a Google Sheet or project management tool like Trello or Asana to start working through sourcing each specific item, negotiating pricing to stay on budget, and moving things around as needed. When you're reaching out to vendors, look through their line sheet to see if there are multiple items that you can source from them for the year to leverage better rates. Sometimes if vendors know you're gonna be doing repeat business with them and you can commit to buying a certain number of SKUs from them throughout the year, they may be more willing to work with you on price or offer other perks like free shipping or payment terms. Now you have a working plan that you can use to guide yourself through the year. See, not so bad, right? Will you give the trend method a try? Comment below and let me know. If you want the secret sauce to building an irresistible subscription box that will attract raving fans, loyal subscribers, and help you stand out against the competition, you need the nine pillar framework. Run your subscription box idea through my nine pillar framework and you'll be amazed at how you can transform your idea into something even better than you already imagined it to be. You can find it inside my popular ebook, Subscription Box Essentials, linked in the description. If you like this video, hit that like button and be sure to subscribe. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.